Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel. Today, we will continue our discussion concerning the kinds of obligations classified according to its demandability. This is actually from Article 1193 to 1197. Before we discuss, please like and subscribe and click that bell button para updated ka sa new video uploads nani. Article 1193. Obligations for host fulfillment a day certain has been fixed shall be demandable only when that day comes. Obligations with a resolutory period takes effect at once, but terminate upon arrival of the day certain. A day certain is understood to be that which must necessarily come, although it may not be known when. If the uncertainty consists in whether the day will come or not, the obligation is conditional and shall be regulated by the rules of the preceding section. Obviously, Article 1193 talks about an obligation with a period. Before discussing what is an obligation with a period, we define muna natin what is a period. Period is a length of time which determines the effectivity or extinguishment of an obligation, either suspends its demandability or determines its extinguishment. Again, pag period, future and certain event. On the other hand, pag condition, future and uncertain event. That was also discussed in Article 1193 last paragraph diba now this provision also defines day certain accordingly a day certain means the day which will necessarily comes although it may not be known when meaning a day certain from the word itself is a day na sigurado mangyayari darating at mangyayari although hindi natin alam kung kailan mangyayari. In contrast na kay condition, hindi natin alam kung mangyayari ba or hindi. Kay period, mangyayari siya, hindi nga lang natin alam kung kailan. Now, let's proceed. Accordingly, there are also different kinds of period. It is classified according to source. One, it could be legal meaning the period is fixed by law, voluntary if it is fixed by the parties, and judicial if it is fixed by the court. Accordingly, it can also be classified as to its effect. Suspensive period when it suspends the demandability of an obligation upon the arrival of that period. Example, I will give you a car on December 25, 2020. Diba? It suspends the effectivity. Dito, sa December 25 pa, ibibigay yung car. Sinuspend up to December 25. On the other hand, it is a resolutory period if the performance must be terminated or extinguished upon the arrival of that period. Example, bibigyan kita ng 1,000 pesos a month until December 31, 2020. Period can also be classified according to its definiteness. It is definite when it refers to a fixed known date or time. I will give you a car on December 25, 2020. So definite kung kailan ba talaga may date na makalagay. Indefinite. Pag yung date will necessarily happen, but the date of its happening is not known. Meaning, pag definite, di ba, fixed date, December 25, 2020, or January 1, 2021. Sa indefinite naman, although sure na mangyayari, hindi nga lang natin alam kung kailan. I will give you a car when Maria dies. Sure, sigurado naman na mamamatay si Maria. Hindi nga lang natin alam kung kailan. Right? So, requisites of a period. 
para makonsider natin period siya, first, it must refer to a future event. Second, it must be certain. And third, it must be possible. Okay, so let's proceed to Article 1194. In case of loss, deterioration, or improvement of the scene, before the arrival of the day certain, the rules in Article 1189 shall be observed. So this provision actually talks about yung epekto pa rin ng loss, deterioration, or improvement bago pa mangyari or dumating yung period na napag-usapan. And accordingly, according to Article 1194, same rules with that of Article 1189 will be observed. So, class, if hindi nyo pa napapanood yung discussion about Article 1189, which is na discussed na natin in our previous video, I will put a link here or maybe at the end of this video. So, Article 1195. Anything paid or delivered before the arrival of the period, the obligor unaware of the period or believing that, the obligation has become due and demandable, may be recovered with the fruits and interest. So, ang provision na po discusses on the effect of payment before the arrival of the period, ang epekto ng pagbabayad or pag-deliver bago pa man dumating ang period or ang time na napag-usapan. Accordingly, if prepayment is made without the debtor being aware, Hindi alam ni debtor that the period has not yet arrived. So, ina-expect niya na due na talaga. Then, the thing and the fruits can be recovered. If prepayment is made and the debtor was aware of that, that the period has not yet arrived, then the debtor waives the benefit of the term. So, meaning, he cannot recover what he had paid. Kasi nga, he paid it voluntarily. Kahit pa alam niya, na hindi pa naman talaga due ang kanyang obligasyon. So, example, on January 1, 2020, Pogi borrowed from Ganda. So, naghiram na naman si Pogi ng pera kay Ganda worth 10,000 pesos payable on January 1, 2022. So, that is 2 years. Tapos, may interest annually na 6% daw. Okay? So, on January 1, 2021, believing na June na ang kanyang utang, si Pogi ay nagbayad kay Ganda ng 10,000 pesos tapos binayaran niya pa rin yung interest which is good for 2 years. Ang sabi ng Article 1195, si Pogi pwedeng ma-recover ang principal sum o, na binayad niya which is 10,000 pesos. Tapos pati na rin yung interest na 600 pesos, yun yung interest na from year 2021 to 2022 kasi hindi pa rin naman nag yung interest na yun. Okay? But class, the presumption, however, is that alam ng may utang na may na yung kanyang utang ay hindi pa due and demandable. Yung burden of proof na patunayan niyang hindi niya alam na hindi pa pala yung due ay nasa kay debtor. Sa case na to, ay nasa kay Pogi. Okay? So question, Within what period must recovery be made if the debtor did not know that the payment was not due? So, ha kailan, hanggang kailan pwede pang may recover ni debtor ang kanyang naibayad na hindi pa pala due date, di ba? With respect to the principal amount dun sa utang niyo mismo, it should at least be recovered before the matru maturity. Tapos, with respect to the interest naman, Kahit na even after maturity, pwede niya pa rin yung ma-recover. Which is from the date of premature performance to the date of maturity of the obligation. So, ang Article 1195 ay walang application sa mga obligation not to do or sa obligation to do or not to do. Because in an obligation to do, imposibleng babawi mo ang servisyo, ibinigay mo na. And sa obligation not to do naman, hindi mo na rin naman syempre kaya pang bawiin ang hindi mo naman ginawa, di ba? So, that's it. Let's proceed to Article 1196. Whenever in an obligation, a period is designated, it is presumed to have been established for the benefit of both the creditor and the debtor. Unless, 
from the tenor of the same or other circumstances, it should appear that the period has been established in favor of one or of the other. So yung benefit of a period in an obligation. Ito yung tinutukoy ng provisions na to, ng provision na to. So para kaninong benefit ba ang paglalagay ng period sa obligasyon? The presumption is that the period is for the benefit of both the debtor and the creditor. Yun yung sinasabi ni Article 1196. Ang epekto ng presumption na ito ay ang creditor ay hindi maaaring mag-demand ng pagbayad bago dumating ang period na pagkasundoan nila. At si debtor naman ay hindi rin maaaring mag-demand na tanggapin ang pagbabayad before the agreed period. Example, kung si Pogi ay nag-issue ng promissory note to Ganda, demandable on December 25, 2020. So, Pogi cannot insist on prepayment. Nababayaran niya na kahit hindi pa naman dumarating yung December 25, 2020, at si Ganda naman ay hindi rin pwedeng mag-demand na dapat bayaran na prior to December 25, 2020. Now, if the period is for the benefit of the creditor only, meaning the creditor can demand performance at any time, at on the other hand, si debtor ay hindi maaaring pilitin siya na magbayad o tanggapin ang bayad before the period expires. Although there are other reasons for this, marami namang ibang dahilan, but the most common reason for this is yung payment of interest. Kasi pag nag-prepayment, malamang liliit din yung interest na matatanggap nila. So if despite the fact na yung period was made for the benefit of the creditor, nung nagbayad si debtor, pinanggap pa rin naman ni creditor. So pwede rin naman, pwede niya rin namang tanggapin yung bayad. It just mean na there is waiver by the creditor of the period agreed upon. So meaning, yun yung waive niya yung kanyang right. Okay? Yun yung sinasabi ni Article 1196. Now, if the period is for the benefit of the debtor, the debtor naman, so meaning si debtor can oppose a premature demand for payment, pero pwede siyang magbayad on or before the period expires. So si debtor ay hindi pwedeng mapilit na magbayad ng mas maaga, pero pwede siyang magbayad ng mas maaga sa napagkasunduan. Pag yung obligation is worded that such um such that the payment is to be made like within six months or on or before, that is for the benefit of the debtor. Now let's have a few more examples. Pag si Pogi, he buy, if Pogi binds himself to pay Ganda on December 25, 2020, that is for the benefit of both Pogi and Ganda. Now, if Pogi obliged himself to pay ganda within two years, this is for the benefit of the debtor. So, Pogi can pay before the end of two years, but he cannot be compelled by the ganda to pay before the two-year period. Tapos, if Pogi binds himself to pay ganda on demand, so in this case, the benefit is for the creditor or Dito kay ganda because the word because of the word on demand meaning pwedeng mag-demand anytime si ganda ng payment okay so article 1197 if the obligation does not fix a period but from its nature and circumstances it can be inferred that a period was intended the courts may fix the duration thereof the courts shall also fix the duration of the period when it depends upon the will of the debtor. In every case, the courts shall determine such period as may, under the circumstances, have been probably contemplated by the parties. Once fixed by the courts, the period cannot be changed by them. So this provision answers the question, when can the court fix the period? Article 1197 provides for two grounds. Diba? First, sabi when, though the obligation does not fix a period, but it can be inferred that a period was intended. 
Tapos second, when the duration depends upon the will of the debtor. Naalala niyo yung Article 1180, yung when, when my means permit me to do so. Diba? Yun yung best example dito. Okay? So, that's it. Kailan naman? Now, kailan naman when court may not fix a period? First, when makikita mo naman talaga na no term was intended. Tapos second, when it is payable by demand or in demand, I mean. Tapos, when period is specified by law. So, wala nang kailangan i-fix pa. Right? It's as simple as that. Ganun lang siya. Now, let's proceed to Article 1198. The debtor shall lose every right to make use of the period. Number one, when after the obligation has been contracted, he becomes insolvent unless he gives a guarantee or security for the debt. Number two, when he does not furnish to the creditor the guarantees or securities which he has promised. Number three, when by his own acts, he has impaired said guarantees or securities after their establishment. And when through a fortuitous event, they disappear unless he immediately gives new ones as equally satisfactory. And fourth, when the debtor violates his undertaking. Fifth, when the debtor attempts to abscond. So, alin man sa libang kaso na nabanggit sa Article 1198. The debtor shall lose every right to make use of the period. Meaning, the period is disregarded and the obligation becomes demandable at once or immediately demandable. This is actually based on the fact that the debtor might not be able to comply with his obligation. Okay, so discuss natin. First ground, when the debtor becomes insolvent. Now for those of you who do not know what is insolvent or what does insolvent mean? Ganito siya. Kapag ang isang tao ay may mas higit pa na pananagutan o obligasyon kaysa sa kanyang mga ari-arian o mga assets, ibig sabihin, hindi niya kayang bayaran ang kanyang mga pananagutan, mga obligasyon o mga utang, siya ay considered as insolvent. Okay? So example, if Pogi owes ganda 10 10,000 pesos due and demandable on December 25. If on September 10, bago pa man naging due and demandable ang utang ni Pogi, naging insolvent na si Pogi. So si Ganda ay maaaring mag-demand agad ng pagbabayad mula kay Pogi kahit pa hindi pa ito due and demandable. Unless si Pogi ay magbigay ng guarantee or securities for the debt. Second scenario, when the debtor does not furnish guarantees or securities promised. Like, yun sa, ano pa rin, same example. Suppose, dun sa example na yun, si Pogi, pinramis niya kay Ganda na mortgage niya or as a collateral dun sa utang niya ang kanyang bahay. Now, if he fails to furnish said security as promised, mawawala sa kanya yung right for a period. Okay? Kasi hindi niya naman ginawa. Tapos, seka, a third, when guarantees or securities given have been impaired or have disappeared. So, suppose, uh, na mortgage niya ni Pogi yung kanyang bahay kay Ganda. But then, the house was burned. Nasunog yung kanyang bahay through the fault or negligence of Pogi. So, the obligation has become due and demandable. Unless, so meaning nawala pa rin sa kanya yung right of a period. So unless, magbigay na naman siya ng bagong security equally satisfactory. Now, plus this is also true and applicable in case of a 42 twist event. Pareho lang yung rules. Okay? Now, fourth, when the debtor violates his undertaking. Dito naman, pag nag-violate siya ng kanyang undertaking, like if nag-promise siya to render some service tapos hindi niya rin naman ginawa. So the creditor then has a right to demand immediate payment of the debt or the loan. Ganun pa rin. Okay? And last, when the debtor attempts to abscond. Okay? Note plus ha, attempt. So mere attempt is sufficient 
hindi kailangan dito ang actual absconding. Mere attempt is sufficient. On the other hand, mere physical leaving, yung pag-alis lang without intention to defraud naman is not enough. Okay? So, if Pogi changed his address without informing Ganda with the intention of escaping talaga from his obligation, so that act is a sign of bad faith. And as a result, mawawala kay Pogi ang kanyang right to the benefits of the period na stipulated sa kanilang contract. That's it, class. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe and click that bell button para updated ka sa next video upload namin. Thanks again.